I'm Carl Cravens. This is the third year I've hosted this event for you guys, and uh, I'm just excited to be here. We started this out with uh, some ideas by the board who's in your program, and uh, look where it is today. Sold out. Couldn't get any more people in this room. Right now, I want to bring up uh, our mayor. He's going to read a, a proclamation. I know I saw him. Right there he is right here. Mayor Williams, come on up. Thank you. Well, this is going to be a great night, needless to say. When I was standing at the front door, it was awesome to see all of the great athletes from Arlington walking in. Now, I can say a few of them are a little older now, but there's nothing wrong with getting older, is there? As a matter of fact, I turned a, a year older today, as a matter of fact. And it was fun to see a lot of my friends and hear their stories, especially my friends from Sam Houston 73 team uh, that we're going to honor tonight. And yes, they were some incredible athletes in their day, but some of them are not doing too bad now. But you know, I've been impressed with this, uh, this particular event through the years, and there was no way I wasn't going to miss it, especially when Julie Nicholson said, we want you to come back and read a proclamation and be here to honor some of the great people of Arlington and very pleased to do that. And I want to say too that it worked out to where one of, or actually I should say two of Karen and I's dear friends, the mayor of Mesquite, Stan Pickett, and his wife Mary Jo are here honoring one of their citizens, Joyce Daughtry Hooligan, and came over here and let's give them a hand. Give them a great Arlington welcome. Thank you all very much. Well, I'm going to read a proclamation, and of course it's official, and it says, Whereas the Arlington Athletics Hall of Honor Foundation was established in 2016 to recognize and honor Arlington's great athletic history and current Arlington athletes, coaches, and those who support athletes, and whereas this amazing organization acknowledges athletes whose accomplishment have shed light on the American Dream City and recognizes the hard work and dedication of coaches, teachers, administrators, and city leaders who have transcended above many in contributions and support of athletic programs in our great city. And whereas the Arlington Athletics Hall of Honor Foundation also rewards current students with either the Rusty Ward or the Eddie Peach Scholarship who excel in the classroom as well as in the athletic or fine arts department respectively and who are attending a post-secondary institution and passes strong leadership potential. And whereas this remarkable foundation manages to honor the past and emphasize the future in such an admirable and distinguished manner and, I give us, and it gives us great pride to celebrate their incredible efforts in our community. Now therefore, I, Jeff Williams, Mayor of the City of Arlington, Texas, and on behalf of the Arlington City Council, do hereby proclaim May the 30th, 2019, as Arlington Athletics Hall of Honor Day. Thank you all for what you're doing, and yes, because of all of you all, it is a great night in Arlington, isn't it? Mary Williams, hang on up here for just a second. We want to. We got a small token of appreciation for you. If you don't mind, just hanging up here for one one more minute. It is also your birthday, and it's always hard to go before or after our mayor because he's got so much energy. His gas tank is always full, and uh, th does he not have a lot of energy? Would you agree? But sometimes, every every once in a while, I hear that his gas tank's not always full, and to help you out with that, we brought you a little gift you can take home with you. Happy birthday. Fill this up, put it in the back of your Suburban, and it'll get you where you need to go. Thank you, Carl. It's terrible for a mayor to run out of gas, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it Thank greatly. You. Thank you very much. There's an inside joke there. So uh, Right now, I'd like to bring up Parker Vandergriff. He's got a few words to say, and then he's going to share a video uh, with us that I think you'll find extremely, extremely enjoying. Thank you all uh, for being here tonight. Um, Several years ago, Jeff and Kenneth, they came to my family and said, we want to 
uh, you know, called this night the Tom Vandergriff Night of Champions. Um, you know, they said there's no greater champion for Arlington than Tom Vandergriff, uh, donated uh, school uniforms uh, for the, the marching band Arlington High School, football uniforms, uh, charter buses, scoreboards, uh, spent countless hours, hundreds of hours with school children. Uh, there's really, like I said, no greater champion. So as Tom Vandergriff's only grandson, it kind of surprised them that uh, you know, I'm probably one of the biggest advocates for his legacy. I, I, he's someone who's touched hundreds of lives, thousands of lives, and he's someone we should remember. But I told them, I, I lobbied for a couple of years to actually drop the name uh, Tom Vandergriff, Knight of Champions, and, uh, because he, he would have wanted that. It was a night to remember all of you all and not him. Um, so they were totally floored. Uh, Jeff said it's absolutely not negotiable. Uh, we are keeping it the Tom Vandergriff, Knight of Champions. And uh, so I look at this quote here tonight um, we're from Jerry Jones that says, Tom Vandergriff was a leader with a common touch, someone who not only saw the big picture, but knew how to color the canvas and shape the image. So I realized that we're all here tonight really because of his vision, the fact that we saw, he saw the big picture. So I think of the Carroll family who's given their, their time um, and energy, uh, you know, without any recognition, you have Tom and Ben Grieve. Uh, Tom was transplanted here back in 72 from Massachusetts and has made his life here. And Ben was born at Arlington Memorial Hospital. You have Geraldine Mills who, um, gosh, decades ago, Tom Vanderf gave a $50,000 check to help the Fielder House get going. And she's continued that legacy today. You look at the Sam Houston um, uh, football team and one of the greatest thrills of Tom Vandergriff's life was announcing the Arlington High School and Sam Houston uh, football games every Friday night. So I realize we're really all here because of, because of him and his legacy. So Kenneth and Jeff, I promise I will stop my lobbying uh, to drop the name. I think it's a great name. Um, and I'm excited that we'll continue um, this night every year. Uh, there's a video uh, to play tonight. Um, Right before opening day, uh, we really launched a really special project uh, about the, the story of Tom Vandergriff. It's a film project, and uh, had about 400 people come together for the launch of this thing. And this was one of the, I think, 12 videos uh, played that night. It's a two and a half minute video. It's really centered around the Rangers and his, his impact on the Rangers organization. Um, but how I tied that all back to tonight was uh, while the Rangers were his, his love child, so to speak, and uh, the love of his life, uh, when the Rangers clinched the, their very first American League West Championship in, in, in 1996, um, he was not there, and he said he was where he needed to be, which was announcing a high school football game. Uh, so that kind of just sums up who he was, that above all of everything else, that his priority was always with Arlington Athletics and the student athletes and the youth of this city. So I'll direct your attention to this video, and thank you all for being here, and we'll have a great evening. When both Arlington and I were very young. It was determined by a majority of our citizens that we would be a city of the first rank. Tom Vandegriff, was, without question in my mind, was the greatest man I ever met. He was the shortstop between Dallas and Fort Worth. He was the guy that brought it together. Generally, we were at war with each other. But here, Dallas, Fort Worth, everybody, agreed on baseball, Major League Baseball. This story of a, of, a, of a man who wouldn't give up, who simply would not take no for an answer, even though it took decades to get it done, he would not stop. And if he hadn't had somebody like that, I don't know what they would have done. And he, more than anybody else before or since, has been able to do that. His vision was so big, he saw things that none of the rest of us could see. What you remember about the Rangers are playoff appearances, World Series appearances, a new stadium, three million fans, but it, you really can't put it in perspective or have a true feeling for what it means unless you go back and remember who Tom Vandergriff was and where we started. The first time I met Tom Vandergriff <laughs> was probably when he was announcing, and he would come in the, in, in the dugout and do a, a post-game interview. What, what, what got me was just his passion for baseball. Arlington can do it! One of the sad moments for me was him going to the last game at Turnpike Stadium because I knew it had meant so much to him. I'm dreading to drive away from the park. That's the hardest part of all. 
I wanted the Ranger fans to know that but for him it wouldn't have all happened. The human nature tendency to forget. You know, we have one shot to make something be impactful, to influence people. The story has to be told. This is the Unsung Hero Award, and the Unsung Hero recognizes an individual who has positively influenced a program or an organization from behind the scenes with a positive attitude, a willingness to help in whatever capacity necessary, and a commitment to excellence. And our, uh, the winner tonight for that award is, is very deserving of this. It's Geraldine Mills. Please come to the stage. Geraldine Mills. She was born January 1st, 1941. Harris Hospital in Fort Worth, Texas. She came home to Arlington, as she says, ASAP. She grew up on Arnold Street near Meadowbrook Park. Later, her family moved to Pantigo, but in 1948, family moved back to Arlington into the Meadowbrook Park area on Dugan Street. She attended Southside School in Arlington High School. Believe it or not, she met her future husband, James Mills, while attending Southside School. They have been married 61 years and have four children, James, Selena, Jeannie, and Julie. Many of us here tonight attended school with them. Grandchildren, Shelby, Kaylin, Jesse, and Shane, and great-grandchildren, Lillian, Harley, Daisy, and James Kaylin. In breaking her life down, she spent 40 years as a sports mom and wife, watching her children and husband play sports and loving every minute of it. Husband James was a coach and baseball umpire. If you grew up playing baseball in Arlington, many of us either played with or against his teams. He was also one of my favorite baseball umpires and did not take any blank blank from parents or players. Geraldine was there at all the events in the background as a spectator. Last 20 years, Geraldine has spent her time at the Fielder Road Museum, sharing the rich history of Arlington. Example of her best exhibits were of the 1940s honoring the black community that contributed to the growth of Arlington. The 1950s exhibit of the Junior Rose Bowl champions, uh, Arlington State College, UTA today. This team was the two-time national champion in 1956 and 1957. 2000s exhibits of Hispanic families and their contributions to the growth of the city of Arlington. 2018 a boxing exhibit of Arlington fighters of the 1940s to the 1980s. A big success as the exhibit had the opportunity to welcome fighters from the 1950s to 1980s to a get-together and discussion of the sport. In many of the rooms of the museum are small exhibits. One example is of the 1920s horse race track between Abrams and Division. Geraldine is a treasure to the city of Arlington. She is a historian of the city and works very hard to ensure that the people of Arlington enjoy coming to the museum to see the exhibits. It is with great pleasure and my honor to present the Unsung Hero Award to Geraldine Nash Mills. Say something. They told me three minutes on these things. And I said, I think I can do that. But actually, when they told me, you know, this athletic foundation deal, I thought, you know why I'm getting this? Because I married the cutest quarterback that ever came out of Arlington High School. <laughs> Stand up, James Mills. <laughs> now, now, some women may disagree with me, and they may think Raymond was the God's gift to women out there, but you know, James was mine, and he was the best. But I appreciate the board for this, and I appreciate all the people I see out here that have contributed to the exhibits we have at the museum. I couldn't do it without you, and it's, uh, it's great, and I appreciate this very much. Thank you so much. All right, Geraldine, I gotta confess, I got so excited when I saw you win an award that I skipped two of them and I went straight to yours. So the Heritage Team Award is pretty simple. It recognizes team excellence. I don't, I don't know there's a better choice than what we picked for this award tonight. The story of the 1973 Sam Houston Texan football team is very unique and very noteworthy in this city sports history. Coach Hyden's team was coming off a 6-3-1 season the year before and this squad for the upcoming campaign felt they could accomplish maybe the ultimate goal. This is their story. Yes, we thought we could be good. We were small in numbers and small in size for our high school football team, but we had big uh, dreams. And uh, 
expected to go pretty far in the playoffs. Well, you've got to start with Reuben Tomlin, the quarterback, and uh, Ronald Burns, the running back, John Smitty, Mark Krug, Dino Yurkitty, Steve Cunningham, Drew Perkins, and Ron Latham, Bruce Laughlin, <laughs> Jeff Harton, just to name a few. You know, Jeff is a coach at San Diego State now. But they, they knew they could win. They were convinced they could. And uh, regardless of who was coaching them, they were going to do that. <laughs> they were, uh, and then you think about the coaches I had on the staff. They had a lot to do with that. Jerry Griffin was a childhood friend. We went to Arlington High together. He, along with Bud Remenzi, we went to Arlington High together, were two of my best friends. I met Billy Stewart when he first came out of college from, and graduated from UTA. Coach Gilstrap told me about Billy and I, and he recommended Gilstrap was right. Bill Keith came to us from junior high there at Arlington. Bill was a great defensive coach. The toughest game in 73 was against Lamar, cross-town rivalry. The Colts were tough, too. This was the seventh try to, be to beat Arlington. We had lost to them six times in a row. And, and we had a tie with them. Whoever won the Lamar game would be district champions. We fought hard for the 14 to nothing victory. I knew the team and the coaches were pumped. At this point, we felt we could win it all. We beat South Garland Colonels 13 to nothing in a muddy game and a trip to San Angelo to play Permian, Odessa Permian, was a hard one. It was bitter cold and intimidating on the field. Ronald Burns was stopped on the very first play, cold, and a reporter in the press box said, welcome to West Texas football. So when the Texans surprised Permian, a North Texas reporter remarked, so welcome to North Texas football. And next we were gonna play Tyler. And I told the team, don't worry about Earl Campbell. Anybody that big can't be that fast. I learned to eat those words, but stop Errol Campbell. We stopped him because he ran one play for 60 yards and 20 plays for 60 yards. So he averaged about three yards a carry outside of that 60 yard run. The whole school was excited too. And our principal, Bud Remenzi, he, uh, he was a nucleus of our school. He kind of, he got excited at pep rallies and started yelling and leading the yells and it was a great time. It wasn't the rivalry that it was during just regular district play. They really did back and we got back the Texans and we got many telegrams and cards and phone calls from people just all over everywhere. It was just sort of unreal. From my viewpoint, he was calm with the kids. He wasn't a yeller or a rant raver. In, on the field. Now, if he had stuff to say to the kids, it's probably in the dressing room. He was uh, uh, quiet, but I think the kids knew exactly what he meant when he said what he did. Loved, they let us play football, I think, and then they coached us the right way, and they made Coach Griffin and Coach Stewart and Coach Hyden. Uh, we believed in, in them just as they believed in us. and. Uh, we were a team. I think that's what this all about is about the team. Oh yes, remember the long tall Texans? They were just uh, one of the girls that was a, a a bell girl, I guess you call it. You know, was a good friend of our kids. And the long tall Texans, through all of those many fun years, were just a real crowd pleaser, stand out because of the height and all. And no other school that I recall ever had anything like what they had together, the kids. I was trying to be over 5'7 when I got to high school, and I was trying to uh, weigh 140 pounds. But I was having to try to weigh 137, I think, when I played in high school. And uh, I played at Arlington High, and uh, we had just won state two years before. 
I was in the ninth grade when they won state. And uh, then my sophomore year, I was on the B team under Sam Curley. And uh, then my senior year, I had, my junior and senior year, I had Mr. Workman. Mm -hmm. It was, then you think about Gilstrap at, at Arlington State and uh, the other coaches that I've had. Um, it was really, it was really a, a blessing for me. Well, it looks like we are now. That's the nice thing about it. Uh, you know, we back in the day, you know, everybody would talk about they were at that game, you know, not just it was guys from the other teams, you know, like Lamar and Arlington, you know. Of course, back then, we, I think it was 75,000 people in Arlington. Everybody, we all knew each other because we'd either played baseball against each other or football or whatever. So we knew each other from a young age. So it wasn't like you're, you know, playing against somebody you didn't know. So all those guys were friends. They were, they were at the games. They remember it. So it was, it was a tough loss. But like I said, uh, I think we're getting, with this recognition here, it, it makes it kind of nice to have it all brought back to forefront like it is now. I think they deserve all that that you could possibly pour on them, and I, I couldn't really say that they've gotten the recognition they should have or not, but they've been further than any team since then, I think, has been there. And now they're taking so many to the playoffs that it, going to the playoffs is almost expected. It wasn't that way in 73. Well, you've got to look at who it involves. It involves a whole school. It's, you got the band, the cheerleaders, the drill team, and you got a lot of football players playing, you got varsity, JV, and, and ninth grade, or whatever, however they play them now. The junior highs involved, there's just a whole lot of people involved in football. And I think that's it, you get to, I can remember when I went to Arlington High School and they won state in 51, man, that was unbelievable for us. To go, go down to, uh, I think it was Waco, Baylor Stadium, wasn't it, and play uh, La Vega, Man, I, you don't forget things like that. Okay, well, Mr. Vandegrift had announced all the football games back then. And even when he was mayor, he continued. But when we got so many high schools, I think he, he had to stop because he couldn't do all of them. But he went, we told him we wanted our announcer at the game. And they were a little worried about that. They didn't know what kind of announcer we were going to bring out there, you know, a bunch of hicks from the big city going to the to the west. So he went up to the press box that day of the game and he walked in and they came over and said, this is our spotter. He'll tell you the names of every player. He said, I already know the names of every player. I don't use a spotter. And they all, uh, ooh. <laughs> so <laughs> they didn't like that at all. But I wanted him announcing. I felt like if the team heard him announcing that it'd be more like home. <laughs> Other than the 1951 Arlington Colts, no city team had advanced further in the state playoffs. It was truly a season that the school and this city could take pride in the years to follow. We now have our Legends Award. The Legends Award is given to a person in the Arlington community who has, exemplifies grace, character, and a giving spirit. This is someone that over the long term has exhibited a servant's heart towards community, friends, and family, no matter what the situation or cost. Tonight we're excited uh, this award is gonna have a new name, rightfully so. The recipients of this award tonight uh, have allowed us to continue to call this award the uh, Chris and Becky Carroll Legends Award. So thank you guys very, very, very much. Watch this video and then I'd like you guys to come to stage. If I were to ask a crowd like we have here tonight, how many of you eaten at a Spring Creek barbecue? Raise your hand. Now, how many have been to an event that Spring Creek provided the food? Again, raise your hand. If you're at an event such as a sports banquet, like an optimist team, a junior high team, a high school team, or college um, sports team, mainly UTA, or even a civic event or a church event, if you've had the Spring Creek meal, raise your hand. Now, 
How many of you have purchased these stock cards that some kid comes to your door, or it may be your, grand, your kid or your grandkid, and says he wants you to buy this, this tickets to some events in Arlington? And these have a free meal on them, and one of those free meals is mostly, always, one of the items is Spring Creek barbecue. Raise your hand if you've done one of those. And by the way, that meal was not free for Spring Creek. Becky and Chris donated all of those meals. Now everyone in the room should have their hands raised by now. If not, go ahead and raise your hand to the carols because the meal you have here tonight was donated by Spring Creek. All of the free meals add up to about two and a half million dollars a year that they spend each year. You don't see big TV ads, newspaper ads, or billboards. Why is this? Because the carols chose to spend their money advertising budget in ways that benefit and serve their community. Chris is a CPA and a real estate investor. In 1978, he left Trammell Crow and joined with his good friend Roy English to open Homestead Barbecue on South Collins. After several years, he started his own barbecue restaurants that Becky named Spring Creek. Spring Creek and Mexican Inns now have grown to 45 restaurants and employ 2,000 people, 1,600 of those of which are teenagers. Chris says he always wanted to be a coach, so the 1,600 young employees are his players. He coaches all of his employees to be friendly, look you in the eye when speaking, have a firm handshake, and be a good student. Like any sports team, performers are awarded for their good performances. Chris awards a bonus to each student employee that maintains a B average each semester. If the student goes to college or is in college when he goes to work for Chris, he maintains a B average while taking at least 12 hours. Chris awards a bonus of $5,000 each semester. Additionally, if any of his management employee team has students that are in college and maintain a B average with taking 12 hours, that student also gets the $5,000 per semester. Chris and Becky's philanthropy extends way beyond free meals. Over the years, whenever there is a campaign to raise funds for UTA, the Chamber, and many others, Chris is the first one to step up at the plate and make that lead gift. It gives me great pleasure to be able to present the Legends Award to my great friends, Chris and Becky Carroll. The award is given to a person, or in this case, person who exemplifies grace, character, and a giving spirit. This is one that over the long term has exhibited a servant's heart towards community, friends, and family, no matter what the situation or personal cost. Congratulations, Becky and Chris. Hey, I want to thank uh, the board, uh, Coach uh, Jeff Kemp. Um, and I want to thank Carl and certainly Tom Cravens. Carl, I don't know if you guys have had a chance. I saw Carl play high school football. He was pretty special. And he won't talk about it much, but he was really good. Played at the uh, University of the South, Swanee. And I think it's accurate to say, and Carl can correct me, I think you still are the all-time leading rusher at that school. Is that correct? Almost 4,000 yards. I'm, I'm embarrassing Carl, I know, but I just want everybody to know how special he was when he played Tom Cravens is one of the first people I met when I came to Arlington. And um, actually, Tom, we wouldn't have done the first Spring Creek in Arlington, Texas, but Tom got it done for us, helped us put it together. So thank you, Tom, a good friend, someone I've always looked up to. Uh, a quick shout out to the Spring Creek guys. I don't know if they can hear me out there, but when you get a chance, do let them know, thank them. Uh, our catering director was here tonight, Keith Myros. Keith started with us when he was about 15 or 16 and went in the Army for a few years, came back. So he's been with us almost 40 years now. So if you ever get a chance to meet Keith, please say hello to him. I'd like to introduce the Spring Creek team that's here with me tonight, if you give me just a second on that. Hey, guys, when I, when I introduce you, and I'm going to start with you, Taylor, if you would stand up and say hello to everybody. This is Taylor Milton. Oh, you know what? I started to give you. Oh, Taylor just got married about a month ago, so I'm still working on the last name. Taylor Reynolds now. All right, Taylor's a TCU young lady, CPA, and is controller for Spring Creek. Thank you, Taylor. Appreciate it. If there's any problem with the money, we go to Taylor. But, hey, by the way, also tonight with us, marketing, marketing director for Spring Creek Barbecue, Kevin Guyton. Kevin, would you stand up and shout out, say hello? <laughs> Kevin and I have been in business together for about 20, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. Kevin started with us when she was 12, so <laughs> time flies, man. 
Hey, also tonight, my daughter Katie, who went to school in Arlington, is here, and I don't get a chance to see Katie much. Katie lives in Dallas, and Katie has four babies under four. If there's any moms in here, you can understand. <laughs> Katie, just, Katie just gave birth to twins just a weeks ago, so it's a big night for Katie to get out. Stand up and say hello, Katie. <laughs> Got a baby. My son is here tonight, James Carroll, and James's fiance, Holland. You guys stand up, you too, Holland. Say hello, baby. <laughs> They're getting married in about four weeks in Colorado, and uh, Holland's a California girl, but y'all be nice to her, okay? <laughs> the, uh, if you give me one second, and I know it, I gotta be careful with time here, but I wanna uh, talk about something that's very important to me, if you would. Uh, you know, it was almost 40 years ago that we did our first restaurant, and Becky and I, Becky was a high school English teacher for a few years, and then she was uh, director of public relations for uh, one of the Hunt family companies, Woodbine Development. I taught school for one year also, but we ultimately uh, wanted to have our own business, so when we sat down to work on Spring Creek, Becky came up with a name, and I was always proud of that, because I love the name, <laughs> and that, Be Becky needs to get the credit for that. And uh, Becky was uh, very creative, I think. Anyway, the first restaurant we opened, uh, it was important to us to, uh, we made a commitment that we were gonna try to support the, commi uh, the community. Wherever we had restaurants, we wanted to be a part of the community. So the first restaurant, we started working on it and uh, we, we wanted to work with the schools, the teachers, because we had both had that experience before, coaches, sports programs. So we identified churches, missionary work, uh, sports, youth sports programs, and uh, that was our commitment. So the first restaurant, uh, almost 40 years ago, uh, we averaged 50 or $60,000 a year in commitment to the community. And so as we opened each new restaurant, we tried to keep that same commitment wherever we were. So we have today 43 restaurants, and James is trying to get a couple more built right now. And by the way, James heads up Carroll Capital, and our Carroll uh, Real Estate Investments also is on the board of directors uh, actively for Spring Creek. But James has a couple more restaurants going in Houston right now for us. But anyway, we're going to be, we're right at 43 restaurants today, and we've kept that commitment all the way. And so we don't talk about this much, but I want to say it tonight. We, we average $2.5 million a year in commitment to the communities that we're involved with because we kept that commitment up for each restaurant we opened. And it just it shocks me when I look at it too. The last 10 years, we've uh, provided 25, 26 million dollars to the community. The reason I'm talking about this tonight, it's important to me. My sweet, sweet Becky passed away uh, almost seven years ago. And uh, Becky, you know, she, obviously she can't be with us physically, but I guarantee you, she's here tonight spiritually. And um, I just know that this makes her very happy. And, uh, you know, maybe, by the way, I've seen some old friends tonight, and I, I was seeing uh, Danny Husband. I hadn't seen Danny in a long time. Danny was one of the first guys we worked with when we got to town here. And uh, Danny was doing basketball camps. You know, Danny's one of the greatest basketball coaches we've had around here. <laughs> and so, and I remember my son, six years old, was going to basketball camps. And it must have worked, Danny, because James turned out to be a pretty good ball player, <laughs> and so it's, uh, it was a great experience for us. Danny was always, and his coaches were always helping the young people in the community, and we wanted to be a part of that. Uh, Alvy Burdine helped us, uh, where's Alvy? Alvy here tonight? Alvy Burdine helped us identify groups we wanted to work with. And I, I need to say something because I haven't had an opportunity to do this. It's very important to me, so bear with me. Tom Grieve, where's Tom? Tom, thank you, sir. Tom, when my sweet Becky was very sick, at Baylor Hospital, been there six months in this doggone situation. Uh, but Becky loved the Rangers. She loved to, she really enjoyed Tom's broadcast uh, when, when Tom was broadcasting for the Rangers. Still are doing that, I'm sure. But Tom, Tom was so gracious. We were in the hospital, and it was about the fourth or fifth inning that night. Becky's in her hospital bed, but she wanted to watch the Ranger game. And so about the fourth or fifth inning, Tom was so gracious and recognized Becky and gave encouraging words. And Becky, <clears throat> Becky smiled. It was a big moment for us. Tom, thank you very much for that. <laughs> okay, I, want, I just want to say that, thank you, Jeff. Yeah. 
this is a special night for our whole family, the Spring Creek family. And, uh, and when you think about Spring Creek barbecue, if you would, think about Becky Carroll. And by the way, Kevin was right there with Becky working on these events for the last 20 years or so. So say hello to Kevin Guyton when you can too. But think about Becky Carroll. She was a wonderful lady. And by the way, how many, it's probably been too many years, but anybody in here, if you ever dealt with Becky or met Becky, would you raise your hand for me so I can see it? Atta baby, thank you so much. It's a big night for us. I want to let the guys know how much we appreciate uh, this, this wonderful honor. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, the Hall of Honor recognizes coaches, teachers, administrators, city leaders who have gone above and beyond in contributions and support of the athletic programs in Arlington. The inductees tonight, and I'm going to introduce one of them, but I'm going to tell you who they all are uh, first. It's John Nelson, Dale Archer, Joni McCoy, and Danny Husband. First, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, John Nelson because he's going to take over and do some awards uh, following, following what I'm doing here. So John's a product of Arlington schools. He's attended Cookin, Davis, Arlington High, UTA. Since 1972, he's been the sports voice of Arlington. And if you can't turn the TV on without a sporting event on locally and not hear John's voice. Or the people that are talking are getting uh, information in their ear from John. And uh, we couldn't be more proud to, to recognize John tonight, uh, the, the voice of Arlington Athletics. John, congratulations. Mr. Play-by-Play, -play, John Wyatt Ball, a.k.a. John Nelson, has been the play-by-play -play voice of Arlington Sports since 1972. That's when he called his first high school football game between Arlington Lamar and Sam Houston. John's first radio play-by-play -play gigs, however, came two years earlier in Fort Worth with TCU varsity baseball, freshman football, and pro ice hockey. Name the sport and John Nelson has called it. If the game ball or object bounces, rolls, gets kicked, hit, spiked, fumble, missed, or caught, John has seen it, flawlessly recounting the action at the speed of life. During 49 years behind the mic, John has broadcast 19 different sports. He once said that calling sports was an incurable disease of passion and duty. That's an illness few broadcasters in Texas have exploited so well for so long to call games with such accuracy and objectivity. A disciple and eager student under Bill Mercer at UNT, John developed his own smooth, understated style on his way to becoming a radio DJ, staff announcer, interviewer, reporter, and finally play-by-play -play guy and TV producer. Meticulous research, recall, and natural ability have enabled my not-so-little brother to become what he always wanted to be, a sports announcer. He's done it at WFAA, WBAP, and for Mutual Network and Southwest Conference Football. You've also known him at Arlington Telecable, Time Warner, AT&T, and Spectrum, and others. If a station or a network has a game and a microphone, John's behind it. He's worked with such luminaries as Kurt Gowdy, Dick Enberg, Merlin Olson, Bill Mercer, Vern Lundquist, our own Eric Nadell, Steve Busby, and our own Tom Grieve, and Jack Buck, ad infinitum. John's countless interviews have featured the likes of Ted Williams, Tom Landry, Jesse Owens, Duke Snyder, and of course, Arlington's first vocal sports celebrity, Tom Vandergriff. At age 72, John Nelson is still at the mic for football and volleyball games in Arlington, Mansfield, Irving, and Dallas. He recently did UTA's final five regular season men's women's basketball games for ESPN. In summer, John feeds color information to visiting team announcers during Texas Rangers baseball games. And for 19 years, he's announced Arlington's televised July 4th parade. When Fox Southwest Sports carries the Texas UIL football championship series at AT&T, John is there to work game stats glued to eight games in three days. His beat goes on year-round. Oh, and about John's broadcasting alias, B-A-L-L -L is a hard name to enunciate, leading him to create an easy two-syllable moniker. How did he do it? 
Well, John's favorite sports announcer was Lindsey Nelson. His paternal grandmother's maiden name was Nelson. One plus one plus one. Well, you get it. You get it. Uh, clever guy, this John Nelson. Congratulations on such a great honor, my brother. You've earned it. Well, thank you, Carl. Thank you, board. And uh, thank you, bro, for that uh, introduction. To be associated with the uh, past Hall of Honor recipients, to say the least, is an honor. Uh, down through the years, all you coaches and student athletes have been so nice to me on the field and off the field, on the court and off the court, and it means a lot. It really does. There's nothing like mutual respect. I've always said that sports is drama without a script. It seems without question, my friend Tom Grieve can attest to this, and if Tom Vandegrift were here tonight, he would say the same thing. You'll see something one night that you haven't seen the previous night or maybe the previous week. And that's why I really like doing what I do. Sports also unifies people. It's uh, something that uh, brings generations and connects generations down through the years. Again, we've got a full agenda tonight and uh, appreciate everyone being here and appreciate the award. <laughs> Continuing with our Hall of Honor inductees, we now recognize Dale Archer. Introducing Dale Archer, Robert Gill. Well, thanks to the Archer family for this great honor, Betty, Joe, Dean, Debbie, Deanne, and the rest of the Archer family. And thanks to the Hall of Honor for their thoughtfulness to induct Dale Archer. First on a humorous side, uh, at Al's Hamburgers, we used to gather there on Friday nights after our basketball games. Uh, Danny Husband, who's present tonight, would know what I'm talking about. Well, we're at Irving MacArthur one night, and we're getting the dog beat out of us, and I'm up hollering, screaming, trying to get us going a little bit, and Dell reaches and grabs me by the seat of my pants, throws me back down in my chair, and looks at me and goes, if you'll sit down and shut up, we'll get to Al's hamburgers before they close down. Uh, another human thing was at uh, Texas Hall. And we, that's where we played Sam Houston. Don Lewis, David Clow was coaches there. And Billy Cowan was one of the officials in the ball game out of the Dallas chapter. And um, I kind of lost my place as an assistant and got a technical foul. Well, by the grace of God, the late Scott Hughes makes two free throws late in the game to, to win the ball game for us. And um, as we're walking off the floor, Dale grabs me out of the arm and kind of squeezes it. He goes, let me tell you something. Scott Hughes doesn't make those free throws. I'm firing your butt. So uh, <laughs> those are two stories that uh, really stick out humorously. But um, from a heartfelt emotion, um, I lost my dad when I was 19 years old. And no one has filled those shoes like Dell Archer did. Um, he loved me unconditional when he didn't have to. He taught me a lot about life, a lot about coaching, and he let me into his family. And that was a huge, huge part of our relationship. And I'm so grateful to him. I thank the Lord for Dell Archer loving, missing, and thank you for this opportunity. On behalf of the whole Archer family, I would like to thank Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor, our dad's managers and all the dedicated players that a handful of them are here. <laughs> a special thank to Judson Pritchard, Robert Gill, Danny Husbands, all of these were his assistants, but dear family friends over the past years. As most of you knew our dad, he was, he was not just a hit, it was not just a job. He loved this career and loved his position. He loved the game. And Leonard, he enjoyed coaching his teams, leading them to victory. He will always be known as Coach Archer to most everybody that walks up to him an exceptional coach, counselor, dad, and again, thank you for, from our family. 
Our next Hall of Honor recipient is Joni McCoy. With her introduction, Tracy Perez. Nelson Mandela once said, it seems impossible until it's done. This idea is the epitome of those who dare to dream, those who see beyond what is present. Joni McCoy is such a person who dared to dream of what the sport she loved could truly be. She was definitely a woman ahead of her time, propelling volleyball into a new light, seeing the impossible become a reality. After graduating college, Joni had a dream of coaching volleyball. Thus, she began her coaching career at Arlington High School in 1976, where she earned a state title as an assistant coach under her mentor, Linda Bradham. She was grateful for her leadership and learned many concepts in those six years. Joni has always credited Bradham with her developing her into the coach that she became. So in 1982, Joni was afforded the opportunity to try her skills as a head coach and to develop her own program with the opening of Martin High School. She stayed there until 2005. This was her time to truly see her dreams come true. In those 29 years, Joni earned 682 varsity wins and qualified for playoffs 19 times. She had 14 appearances at the regional tournament and four appearances in the state tournament, winning the illustrious state title in 1996. Through those years, 58 of her former players were awarded college volleyball scholarships, and many went on to follow her footsteps and become coaches themselves. Joni was named Teacher of the Year in 2001, and she was awarded Coach of the Year 10 times in her career, an honor voted on by fellow coaches. In 2012, Joni was also inducted into the Texas Girls Coaches Association Hall of Fame. She was even credited with founding Metroplex Volleyball, which is known as Texas Advantage Volleyball. Joni's progressive ideas were not always welcomed and caused conflict with more traditional coaches. But this did not stop Joni from pursuing the changes she envisioned that would help advance Texas volleyball. Joni's players known that Joni possesses a no matter what, things will be okay attitude. This could be seen during her calm demeanor during matches, but also during her aggressive battle with breast cancer. Her calm demeanor and fighting determination helped Joni win the battle and help her add the title of breast cancer survivor to her accolades. Those that truly know Joni truly know that she has a humble spirit as she was asked to be the torchbearer for the 2002 Winter Olympics. Although she was competitive and loved to win, when she won, she won with grace. And likewise, when she lost, she lost with grace. Joni never set out for fame or fortune and never sought the limelight. She shied away from pictures and avoided fanfare. She's always been a free-spirited girl from Fort Worth, Texas, who lit up when she touched the volleyball court. That same girl dared to dream the impossible, worked hard to see the impossible become reality, and has challenged the legacy she left behind to dream of more seemingly impossible feats. So I'm honored to introduce my mentor, a legacy for many former players, and AISD Hall of Famer, Joni McCoy. Joni's unable to be here tonight. She resides in Colorado, but sent us this acceptance video. Hello, Arlington. I am beyond honored to accept this placement in the Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor. In preparing for this, the thoughts of my past and how lucky I've been came rolling in. I've been honored to play for some of the best coaches, work with some of the best, learn from coaches all over the nation, and coach some of the finest young ladies that happen to be fortunate enough to go to school in this district. Fifty years ago, yeah, bath and that, I found a sport that was relatively new to me, and it was volleyball. My first mentor was my high school coach, Shirley Langdon. She took a group of interested athletes, and as she learned the sport, we learned to love the sport. It was different. The ball was in constant motion, and you had to control and direct it in midair. Wow, what a concept. I decided as a sophomore that I wanted to coach volleyball. Was this realistic? I don't know. But I had a goal, at least. I remember playing in the old gym at Arlington High when Marge Austin was the coach. The court was placed in the northeast corner of the gym. 
not in the middle of the basketball court. I think it was 70 or 71 when that team from Arlington won state. Coach Lane just put a bunch of us in a car and took us down to Austin so we could watch him play. And if I recall, team members, Dorothy Brooks, Becky Hughes, Janice McAndrew, Debbie Bettinger, Paula Ferguson, and I'm sure I've left some of them out. But those are the ones I can remember. More mentors in my past. First, there was TCJC, which is now TCC, and a man named Dick Hakes taught there, and he had played some volleyball up north. And so he had a bunch of us crazies there, and he put together a team. No funding, nothing. We paid our own way in travel and everything else. And I remember one year in the TCJC gym, we beat the University of Texas. And I believe Tooney Brown, who went to Arlington High, was on that team at UT. Then UTA with Jody Conrad and open ball with Gene Chambliss to my first coaching job at Arlington High in 1976. Linda Braddock was the head coach. And I walked into the gym that first day and saw the team. She asked me what I thought. Being the cocky know-it-all right out of college, um, I told her I thought they could win state. What I did know about high school teams and, and what kind of level of play they had, I didn't, I didn't have any experience in that, but like I said, I was kind of cocky and right out of college. Well, they did win state that first year. I was there in 1976. I believe it was Wendy Wilson, Kristen Bloom, Nancy Dunn, Pam Miller, uh, Christy Ziegler, Marsha Burgart, Peggy McCaffrey, and I think I've left out of two or three more. What a great mentor she was. She told me if I was going to get, if I was going to coach, that it was up to me to join the State High School Girls Coaches Association. And, you know, that was just part of the job. She said, get involved in your profession, and so I did. And I stayed involved with that organization throughout my coaching career. I believe I served on the board of directors for a four-year period also. And after six years, in 1982, I applied for the head job at Martin High School, the new high school. There was nothing to fall back on. There was, had not been anybody there before, uh, didn't know what the future was going to bring. So, you know, usually if you take a, a program and they've had some successes, at least you've got it kind of hanging over your head that that's where you're going to take up and, and, and go from there. Um, I had a real challenge ahead of me at that point. Becky Hughes, Teresa Price, and I decided we wanted to give the players an opportunity to play in the off season. So we formed a club, and it was called Metroplex Volleyball Program. We practiced at Texas Wesleyan, that's where Becky coached at the time. And it also at that time, UIL did not allow any organized practice for underclassmen, only seniors. Well, that was something I still to this day don't quite understand, but we followed the rules and we still took the girls to tournaments and stuff like that. Um, it was real hard keeping their self-esteem where it needed to be when you take them to a tournament and they go up against a California team who had had club in their backgrounds for years and years and we'd get beat, beat really bad like 15-2, 15-3 or sometimes even worse. So, you know, that was not real easy. It wasn't easy on us, it wasn't easy on the girls, but we did. One time we rented an RV, loaded the team in it, and took them to St. Joe, Missouri and played in a tournament there. We paid our own way. Uh, we didn't get paid anything to do this. We just did it basically for the girls. And that club has transformed into Texas Advantage Volleyball. Um, that is pretty much known as the top club in the nation at this time. And they have their own facility and they pay their coaches. So, more power to them. Wow, the young ladies that I've had the privilege to teach the sport I love, 
I am still in contact with most of them thanks to social media. It's probably one, only one good thing that it's good for. And I can also keep up with Coach Tracy, who's uh, taken over since I've been gone and been very successful herself. Anyway, the next 22 years at Martin went by really fast, but I never had any desire to look for another job. I was, I was happy and still involved in many organizations and attended clinics to keep up with the sport. This is the best school district in Texas. I would also like to give a big shout out to my former principals, vice principals, counselors, fellow teachers and, co teachers and coaches, athletic department, and my personal support group. Sometimes I don't think we see how each has impacted us in our lives and our careers. Each of you have, and I thank you. Thank you again for this honor, and also thanks to Arlington Independent School District for finally allowing head coaches to coach only one sport. Our final Hall of Honor inductee is Danny Husband. With his introduction, Robert Landon. My privilege it is to introduce my friend, coach, and teacher, Danny Husband. You may already know his impressive record, an outstanding basketball player at Grand Prairie High School, making it to the regional finals his senior year. He played basketball at UTA. He coached basketball in Grand Prairie and Mansfield schools until the opening of Arlington Martin High School in 1982. 25 years at Martin coaching boys basketball or girls basketball and girls softball. Boys team won district 12 times, reached quarterfinals three times, regional semifinals two times, and regional finals one time. Danny was named district coach of the year 12 times, nominated for state coach of the year, and twice chosen the Tarrant County coach of the year. He had a career one loss record of 455 and 128. That's almost 80% work winning record. So eight out of 10 times that he stepped on the court, he won. You know Danny, the coach and teacher. I want to tell you about Danny, the man. In 1963, over 55 years ago, my family moved to Grand Prairie, Texas. I started the ninth grade in a brand new school, John Adams Junior High. That's where I met Danny Husband on a basketball court at our first practice. Danny had great parents, great coaches and teachers. In junior high and high school, we not only studied hard, but we broadened our lives and life experiences by playing a lot of touch football, baseball, wiffle ball, even skateboarding on homemade skateboards. We played pinball at Great Southwestern Bowling Alley. We chased foul balls at Turnpike Stadium and we listened to the music of the 60s like the Beach Boys and the Beatles. We even chased girls, which we never caught. Danny, he went into coaching. I went into business. No matter where I was in the world, I cherished my calls with Danny. We continued to talk about life and things that mattered. I wanted to know what was the school record this year? Who were his best athletes? How was the matchup zone working? Who were the college recruiters looking at? I even want to know about the PE classes and the health classes, how he was dealing with earrings and tattoos. What about parents and what about his, his health and maybe his ulcers? Even though I was running this big company and hanging with people like Garth Brooks or President George W. Bush, Danny was always there. He taught me things that were really important when I was down. He made me a better person. Speaking to you today, Danny Husband, but also to every coach, teacher, administrator here tonight. Danny, your job mattered. It was important. It was necessary. It was greatly appreciated. You were really successful. And I want you to know, you made a big difference in my life and a big difference in a lot of lives. Thanks to the Arlington Athletic Hall of Fame Committee for naming my friend, Danny Ray Husband, as the 2019 Hall of Honor inductee. Congratulations. Thank you, Terry, for the uh, great introduction there. He brought up some really fond memories. Uh, this is a special night, and I'm honored to be here, and I, I'd like to thank, thank Jeff Kemp and the Hall of Honor uh, Association for, for this really exclusive award. I'd also like to congratulate the other inductees up here tonight. 
this is quite a, an event that I didn't know a whole lot about, but uh, you know, I've got a table over here, my 1967 Grand Prairie Gopher teammates, and uh, I got former players here, I've got former coaches, uh, and, and I have a lot of ties with some of the other inductees that, that, that are, have been introduced before me. Uh, I'd like to take just a, a few minutes here and thank some of the people that have made my career successful. And I told my wife I'd introduce her first. So, <laughs> so I'd like to thank my wife Debbie and, and my daughter Amy for all the support they've given me in all these years. And I've, I'd like to also thank the Martin High School administration, uh, the faculty and the students that uh, always gave me support while I was there. You know, I was blessed to, to be at Martin High School when they opened the doors, and uh, it was a kind of a special place. And I knew right away that uh, if I could get the right people around me, I thought that we could be successful pretty, pretty quickly. In fact, one of the questions that I was asked when I interviewed for the job, uh, the principal asked me, how are you gonna, you know, how are you gonna, what's your attitude gonna be like when you lose during the first few years? And I was so stupid, I told him, well, I don't plan on losing. And fortunately for me, we never did. So I just had the right people, had the right people around me. Uh, I'd like to introduce or, or, or really thank some people that uh, made that possible. Uh, you know, I had some great assistant coaches in David Amos, Joe Tettleton, Leo Jones, Jeff Plemons. Those guys, that's an all-star coaching staff right there. And all those guys went on to have successful uh, coaching careers and, and, and got head jobs. And I'm real proud of, the, of that, that they, they were able to do that during their career. And every one of them are here tonight. And that's, that, that really means a lot to me. All right, and then later on in my career at, at Martin, you know, I, I thought I might get out of coaching for a little while, but it didn't last for couple of months, I think, and the principal asked me to take over the girls' program, and I thought he was kidding. <laughs> but but uh, Coach Amos and I teamed back up, uh, and we coached the girls' basketball and girls' softball, and you're talking about an experience now. But I'm going to tell you, it's, it's one I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade for the world. I had, had a great time doing that, too, and uh, it, it was a great situation for me, and I'm glad I did it. Uh, I'd also, the most important people that I need to introduce right here are, are the former players. You know, you, you want to know why I'm in, uh, successful is because of those guys right there. Uh, you know, they bought into the team concept, which is hard to do nowadays, and, and they bought into the team logo of, you know, what team means, that the letters for team mean together, everyone achieves more. And uh, many of them are here tonight, and I really appreciate you guys being here. It, it means a, a heck of a lot to me. You know, when, when I got into teaching and coaching, I, I didn't get into it for the income. I got into it for the outcome. And outcome means developing better people and better citizens who can go out and possibly impact the world in which we live. And it also means, you know, developing lifelong friendships. and. Uh, you know, you're not going to know the results of these, the outcome of, of, of this until years later when these student athletes and, and coaches come back to you and tell you to your face when they're, uh, you know, in later years that, uh, hey, you were a real positive influence on me. And from talking to players and coaches and friends, uh, you know, I think that it's, my outcome has been very successful and uh, it's, it's been very sentimental. So. I really appreciate this award tonight, and uh, I was going to end on a on my favorite saying, but it's in the program, so you can read it. So, but uh, I really appreciate the award, and, and thank you very much to the Hall of Honor uh, Foundation. Thank you. Moving on to our Hall of Fame portion of the program, the Hall of Fame acknowledges athletes whose accomplishments in the athletic arena have brought credit to the city of Arlington. We have five people from three different decades. Our first honoree from the 1950s, Raymond Glasgow. With this introduction, grandson Jeff Glasgow. I'm here tonight to introduce my grandfather, 
Raymond Glasgow. The man they called Slick grew up in Arlington during the 1940s, back when Arlington was still a small town. He was a four-year varsity player for the Colt football team, where he quarterbacked the Thundering Herd to the 1951 state championship, which is still the only football state championship team in the history of Arlington. Raymond also earned a varsity letter each year of his high school tenure for baseball, basketball, and track. Those were the only sports offered back in his day. My dad would always tell me he is the only person to play every sport at the varsity level, freshman through senior year. I've never fact-checked it, but no one's ever called us out on it. Altogether, he earned 16 varsity letters during his time as a Colt. After graduating from Arlington High, he was offered a contract to pitch for the Milwaukee Braves. He turned it down in favor of a football scholarship at the University of Texas at Austin. He earned a varsity leather down in Austin and then came back home to Arlington to play quarterback for Arlington State, now known as UTA. He quarterbacked the Rebels during the 1954 season and they earned a berth to the Junior Rose Bowl. He was named an All-American that year as well. I grew up listening to stories about how great of an athlete my grandfather was. He was always reluctant to talk about himself, but literal hundreds of newspaper clippings that were kept after all these years told the story. I know my grandfather is very humbled to be inducted into the Arlington Athletics Hall of Honor. He told me his playing days were the best days of his life, and winning state in 1951 was one of his most proudest moments. Congratulations, Grandpa. Raymond Glasgow is seated over here. Mayor Williams will give uh, his award to number 30, Raymond Glasgow. I'd like to thank you all. Thank you a lot. We now move to the 70s and recognize Ronald Burns. Where do we begin? We could talk about the on the field football accomplishments, the Arlington Athlete of the Year in 1973, or even his 2002 Baylor University Hall of Fame induction. But really, that's all for the history books. Let's talk about my dad, Ronald Burns, the person. My dad met my mom when they were both 14 years old, and now they are approaching their 40th wedding anniversary in July. That's an amazing accomplishment, isn't it? But there are so many other highlights. For my oldest sister, Renice, is dad taking us on sightseeing tours when we lived in New York City. Those are great times. She also reminisces over the weekly family bike rides when we lived in South Carolina. So as you can tell, we traveled quite a bit as a family. My father served in the military for 20 years. For my sister, Worry, it's the unconditional love and support dad has demonstrated over the years, even in challenging times. She calls him her stronghold with a wonderful and trusting heart. Worry especially appreciates the fact that her children, Roger, Reslin, Jevin, and Ro, have become the apple of my dad's eye. If there is a grandfather Hall of Fame, we would nominate him for that too. For me though, in addition to my dad's example as a hard worker and provider for the family, I used to love our one-on-one -on -one basketball games in the backyard. Those games were so intense. When I was 14 though, I was finally able to beat him for the first time. I had the bragging rights over one of the best athletes Arlington ever produced. Time simply does not allow for us to share all of the highlights of a life well lived. So as a family, we thank you for being our patriarch and the best father we could ever have. It is my great pleasure to welcome my dad, Ronald Burns, into the Arlington Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. I would like to thank the Athletic Association here for recognizing that great team we was on, Sam Houston. We did a lot and we worked together to do it. So I thank all of my teammates and definitely one man that really led us was Coach James Hyden. Thank you, Coach. I know most of the team would think that I was his son because I got away with some things that they couldn't. <laughs> but we all worked hard. And we accomplished something that I guess it hadn't been done in a while now. So I would be remiss if I didn't <clears throat> tell you about the woman I've been with for the last 40 years. So she's been our rock. She's kept me in line. Those that know me know how I was. So I've had a great life. We travel the world. We travel from coast to coast. And that's what I always wanted to do growing up because I never left the state of Texas until I was 17 years old. 
when I got to travel outside of Texas. Being recruited and having a choice to go where you want to go is a great accomplishment. So to all you young people that got that opportunity now, if one thing I will say to you, don't waste it. Enjoy college, but get your paper. Get it. I went back to school and got mine when I retired from the service because my kids was all in getting ready to go to college. I got my degree. I got it in time for my dad, who had a third grade education, to see me get it. After all, my mom died when I was 13. I played my first organized football when I was in the ninth grade, and we won city that year. So I've had a great run, and I've been good, and life has been good to me and my family. And I would like to thank you and all of y'all for having this opportunity to share this with us. Thank you. We stay in the 70s, the next honor, Joyce Doherty. With her intro, Brian Egan. Joyce Doherty uh, was a, in a class all her own as an athlete. She had an intensity that uh, very few other players had. Uh, she was the closest thing to a Viking shield maiden that I've seen in this lifetime. Joe Frazier once said, you can do anything you want to do if you really put your heart, soul, and mind to it. Her heart, her soul, and her mind were in every second of every competition that she ever played in. And she was usually more athletic than who she was competing against. That was Joyce. She was dominant. Was kind of a dream come true our sophomore year when we realized that they had powder puff football. And we decided, yeah, we're going to coach powder puff football. There were a number of us on the team went in, eventually went into coaching. And uh, I remember thinking, the only thing that we have to do is get Joyce on the field. Game day came, and we found out she wasn't going to be able to make it. We were losing 8-6 to six in the fourth quarter with about oh, 30 seconds or so to play. And all of a sudden, we see Joyce. Long strides coming across the outfield of the baseball field. So we sent Joyce in. She faked, did a beautiful job of faking. Everybody went to her and then realized she didn't have the ball. They left her alone and, and went to the, sack the quarterback in the end zone. Joyce slid out to the left, caught the pass, and proceeded to cover somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 yards to go 97 yards for a touchdown. You know, at the time, I'm, I'm basically thinking uh, Gail Sayers would have wept if he had seen that. And, and, I, and I will tell you this, Barry Sanders would have wept if he had seen that run. And a lot of people think I'm kidding, but it was unbelievable. So I've coached for a long time, and I've seen some great athletes, female and male, and I'd put her in the top five of all, male and female, that I, that I saw play. She, she was that much better than everybody else. And uh, a lot of it was physical, but a lot of it was just in sheer, sheer determination. To Joyce Doherty, I want to thank her for allowing me this great, great honor. Uh, she was in a class of her own as an athlete and competitor, and I knew the first time I saw her in seventh grade basketball that uh, I just wanted to coach her at one point in time. And I got that opportunity as a powder puff coach. And uh, it, it, uh, I rubbed up against greatness, and I'm telling you, she could have played for us. We were district champs in one of the best districts it was a 10-team district in one of the best districts that Arlington High has ever played in. And we were district co-champs, and she could have played for us. Some people might snicker at that, but her supreme athleticism was only surpassed by her grit, which made it nearly impossible for anybody to compete against her. Here's to Joyce Doherty, a true Viking shield maiden of our time. Skull. My brother Mike, and unfortunately my sister Jan wasn't able to make it tonight, they endlessly picked on me as a child. So I credit them for my ninja skills, <laughs> as Brian mentioned. To my mom and dad, who never missed any of my events, and who considered my teammates part of their own children. 
my husband Kevin, son Ryan, and daughter Courtney for enduring endless hours of old sports stories. And I know Ryan was waiting for me to take a header on these steps, but it <clears throat> didn't happen, Ryan. My longtime buddy Patty and her whatever he is now, Patrick, he's always there, haven't figured out who he is. <laughs> Vernon, who I've known since second grade, and his lovely wife Kayla. You could have done better, Kayla. <laughs> and longtime friend Jeff. And I noticed Amy and Mike Wade, all, and more 76, class of 76 people are here. La one of the last speeches I gave was running for a senior class officer. I had to follow Mike's speech when he was a campaign manager. <laughs> when he dropped his shorts and stood in his boxers in front of our entire class. So this speech is going about as well as that one did. <laughs> and Victor Vandergriff, you're somewhere. I've known Victor since first grade. Get your butt some class reunions, you have yet to show up. <laughs> Brian Egan, my classmate, one of my bigger supporters, obviously, and my wonderful powder puff football coach. Thank you for that intro. And as Jeff mentioned, mentioned earlier, the Mayor Mesquite, Stan Pickett, and his wife Mary Jo, and Mesquite Councilman Bruce Archer. It's nice to know that they do get out of town every once in a while and come west. And thanks to all my former teammates, especially ones I've known and played with since childhood. Janice and Julie, known them since we were little bitty, been on several, several teams together. And speedy Julie White, who in six years never dropped the baton once when I handed it to her. And that was hard since there's about a foot and a half difference between our heights. And to the orthopedic surgeons who are still putting me back together. <laughs> and Coach Paula Sleese, my track coach, who informed me two weeks before the district meet, or my junior year, that I was our, new, our team's new high jumper. I had never even been in a high jump pit before. Really appreciate her doing that. Coach Strickland, I could talk for hours on this. She was instru instrumental in bringing girls basketball into Arlington, and I consider her a good friend even to this day. Not only did we get Judy, we got her daddy also. Many of you may not know, he was a piano player for Bob Wills and earned, earned what was it, Hall of Fame in country and western and rock. So we would go there at Christmas and listen to him play. At the time, none of us knew. We were dumb high school kids. We didn't know that we were sitting in front of greatness. And to the people who ratted us out, when we changed Lamar's marquee to say, go Colts. <laughs> I know who that person is. And the unknown person who told Strickland that we'd spend my 18th birthday down at the mine shaft. We, those extra meat grinders we ran at 6.30 in the morning the following day only made us bitter. <laughs> and to the Hall of Fame committee, thank you for this honor and for finally proving to my kids that I wasn't always fat. <laughs> and, they, and they inherited their athletic genes from me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We now move to the 90s. Our first recipient, Ben Grieve. With his introduction, his former coach, Danny Husband. I'm honored to be able to introduce Ben Grieve into the Arlington Athletic Hall of Fame. When you hear the name Grieve in Arlington, you automatically think baseball. Ben is the son of Tom and Kathy Grieve. And of course, Tom and Kathy have been involved with the Texas Rangers for decades. Growing up in Arlington, Ben was noted for his baseball skills. During his high school days, Ben was a major factor in the success of the Martin High School baseball program. His junior year, they won the state championship. His senior year, he won numerous individual awards. He was the second overall pick in 1994 draft by the Oakland A's. Being the son of a major leaguer, it was the first time a father-son combination was selected in the first round of the amateur draft. Ben got to the big leagues in 1998 and was selected to the American League All-Star team that year. Later that year, he was selected Rookie of the Year in the American League. That's pretty impressive for a first-year player. You know, I always tried to see Ben play when he would come to Arlington. 
you know, seeing that big leg kick that he had and the ball flying out of the ballpark. The only problem was he did it way too often against the Rangers. But I know personally that's not all Ben was. You know, he was a three-year letterman on the basketball team, and he was selected to the all-district teams his junior and senior year. Ben was the captain of the basketball team his senior year. Ben's leadership ability was a tremendous asset to the basketball program. His ability to be a team player added to the cohesiveness of the team. He was well-rounded athletically, academically, and socially. Ben played at his own speed, though. When I first started coaching Ben, I thought he could just play a little, at a little higher speed. But as time went on, and after checking stats after games, it was clear that Ben was playing at the right speed. It was a control speed that allowed him to be a very productive player. While playing basketball, Ben led his teams to three district championships, led them to the regional finals, one game short of the state tournament. His teams went 81 and 18 during those three years, including a 29 and four record his senior year. You know, after we lost the regional championship that year and driving back from Waco, Ben told me if baseball didn't work out for him in the future, he wanted to go back to college and become a high school basketball coach. Well, that was very flattering to me, but I looked over at him and told him he needed to set his goals a little higher than that. And of course, baseball worked out well for him. It's always fun to look back on the pages of the past, looking how Ben was an All-American kid and recall that he had a mischievous side as well. It was a pleasure to coach Ben those three years and an honor to introduce him to the Arlington Athletic Hall of Fame, an award well-deserved to one of the best athletes to ever go through Arlington schools. Congratulations to you, Ben, and your family. Coach Husman, thanks. That was awesome. And how cool is it to be up here and get introduced by you? That's makes it really special to share the stage with you tonight. So glad you're here and we're a part of it. And I got a lot of teammates here tonight. Um, you know, I haven't seen some of these guys in a long time, so I wasn't really sure who was around or who would be able to make it out tonight. And so be last week I sent a couple texts out and was like, hey, you guys feel like coming to this event? I'm getting award this award in Arlington in, uh, in a couple weeks. And within minutes, all these guys that are here tonight were like, yeah, we'll be there. Uh, so that, that's really cool to me that you guys are here, and I appreciate you guys coming. It means a lot. It makes it special. So thank you. And I also want to thank the board and um, all the people that voted for me. There's a lot of people here tonight that got a lot of awards for putting a lot of time into this community, a lot more, a lot more time than I ever did in my three years. So it's, it's humbling to be up here on the same stage as all the people that were recognized here tonight. And I appreciate it, and I think everyone here deserves a big hand. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Quick story about Ben, I was broadcasting a Martin by district game and the visiting announcer who hadn't seen Martin play, we were kind of comparing notes and asking me about Martin, well, what about their pitching? Well, their pitching's pretty decent, their infield soaks up ground balls like a sponge, they run the bases well. And he said, well, what about Ben Grieve? How do you defend Ben Grieve? What's the defense? I said, it's easy, upper deck and lower deck. <laughs> he, as they say, he could hit them out of any park, including Yellowstone. Our final honoree from the 90s is Ashley Ivey. With her introduction, her sister, Laura Ivey. Hi, everyone. My name is Laura Ivey Blessing, and I am thrilled and honored to get to introduce my sister, Ashley Ivey Swift, for tonight's award. I am one of Ashley's biggest fans. Ashley is my younger sister by three years, and we live next to each other now in Austin, Texas. She lives behind me, actually. Um, I asked Ashley to give me a list of all of her accomplishments and awards to help me prepare for this intro. And you guys, this list is almost four pages long. I kid you not. And all I can think of when I look at this list is how does she do it? This, this girl has been busy. Uh, how did she manage to graduate in the top 15 in her class at Arlington Lamar High School and excel in varsity volleyball, basketball, track and field, and soccer. And on this list are multiple MVP awards. She was state finalist in high jump and hurdles, all district, all area for multiple sports, athlete of the year, volleyball player of the year, all while playing select club volleyball, competing and succeeding at the junior Olympic level 
and the Youth World Championship level. Incredible accomplishments before college. Her senior year, she was one of the top recruits in the nation and received a full scholarship to play at Stanford University. And in college, her work ethic and discipline continued where she finished her BS and her master's degree while she led a team to compete in three Final Four NCAA championships and has a ring from her 2001 championship win. Are you tired yet? Yeah, I'm not finished. After college, Ashley began her professional career in sand volleyball, and she became one of the top players again in the nation, playing on the USA Beach national team with her former teammates and gold medalists, Carrie Walsh and Misty May. And Ashley continued to win national and international FIVB championships. Uh, this was such a fun time to watch Ashley play, and those swimsuits were very small, by the way. Um, it's just super fun and very competitive. Uh, I don't know how they move in that sand. I really don't. Now Ashley coaches full-time outdoor and indoor volleyball and is mother to Carson, who is a very busy and fast three-year-old, and her daughter Clark, who's a five-month-old. She created and is the director for the outdoor volleyball program for Austin Juniors Volleyball and coaches teams to the highest levels in Junior Olympic Volleyball. In fact, 80% of the girls that she coaches goes on to play volleyball in college and many of them on full rides as well. Ashley, you are such an inspiration and I am so proud of you. Congratulations on being inducted into the Arlington Sports Hall of Fame. I love you, little Ivy. Congrats again. Um, first, thank you for the Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor Foundation for this prestigious recognition. Thank you for my friends and family that are here to support me this evening. None of these accomplishments would mean anything without your support throughout my life. Um, and thank you to my husband and two beautiful children who could not be here tonight. Sports has played a profound impact on my life. Each sport I played taught me a new life skill, and each coach I had helped me become who I am today. Speaking of coaches, congratulations to the Hall of Honor inductees. Being a coach, I know the profound impact a coach can have. And I know when I was a kid, if my mom asked me to clean my room, it wasn't going to happen. But if my coach asked me to clean my room, there was probably a strong probability that that would happen. So congratulations to the coaches, as I know y'all do so much for us. I appreciate all the amazing experiences I had from winning a national championship to traveling the world while playing professional beach volleyball. I was so blessed to have so many great opportunities in my life and happy that now I have an amazing career that allows me to instill the same foundations I learned growing up onto the next generation. All of these awards and accolades would not mean anything without the love and support of everyone in my life. So to all of you, thank you. There are heroes among us who do extraordinary things every day out of kindness of their hearts with a passion to make a difference for the better. First responders, educators, nurses, just some of the grassroots examples of people who dedicate their lives to leave their patch of green grass better than they found it. Harold Hicks is our Everyday Hero Award winner. Good evening, my name is Jim Pointer and I am delighted to be able to introduce to you a new award this year called the Everyday Heroes Award. An Everyday Hero in, in our minds is someone who really has a servant's heart. They tend to do extraordinary things on an everyday basis and they have a passion to really make a difference. First responders, nurses, educators are all examples to us of, of people that are everyday heroes. And I guess to sum it up, they're the, the kind of people that want to leave their little green space a little greener when they're finished with it. Well, this year's nominee, Harrell Hicks, is, is certainly such a, an everyday hero. Let me tell you his story. Harrell was raised in Arlington. He graduated from Lamar High School in 2007. By all accounts, his childhood was difficult, and Harrell had to grow up fast. He got comfort, though, from his schoolmates and from being, playing in team sports. One of his coaches, Coach Collins at Shackleford Junior High, recalls about Harrell, he always had a smile on his face. And he also played on a seventh grade football team that not only was undefeated, but they were unscored upon. So no wonder you have a smile on your face, Harrell. While he was at Lamar, he played for the legendary Eddie Peach, and he also played for the Lamar 7-on-7 seven -seven team 
And that's when I met Harrell was as his coach in seven on seven. And while he was at Lamar, he started developing itching that kind of spread all over his body and then also felt like his lymph nodes were swelling. Well, he went ahead and played, he never complained. And then after he graduated from Lamar, Harrell came back and volunteered as a defensive coordinator for our seven on seven football team. Well, I can remember looking at Harrell on sweltering Saturdays and going, this guy never complains, even though I know he's uncomfortable. Uh, and he, I, I really asked myself, frankly, if I were in his shoes, would I be volunteering and would I be doing this as gracefully as he is? So eventually, uh, the, the lymph nodes reached a point, they grew to the point where he couldn't walk very, very well. And so the doctors did a stem cell, did a biopsy rather, and determined that he had stage four Hopkins lymphoma cancer. So over the next few years, Harrell, by his own count, had six or seven regimens of chemo, and he also had a stem cell therapy done. All of it was partially successful, but did not at any point eradicate his cancer. But despite that diagnosis and all those treatments, Harrell set his sights next on becoming a Dallas fireman, and he passed the appropriate tests. And so now he currently serves his community as a fireman EMT. Well, in the three years he's been there, most of his uh, workmates didn't realize that Harrell even had cancer because A, Harrell doesn't talk about it, and B, he doesn't look the part. He looks like he could still suit up and play. So I'd like you to get some, a better tenor of Harrell, not just from me, but from one of the captains at the Dallas Fire Department wrote a letter, uh, not to us, but to uh, Harrell's immediate supervisor, and I quote, he is one of the few individuals I've worked with who sees our profession as a craft rather than a mere job. His willingness to learn, his initiative, and his work ethic tell me he will meet with great success in his career. He assumes the role of an informal leader amongst his peers while remaining humble, respectful, and hardworking in the eyes of his chain of command. He seems to have picked up many of the good habits required of this job while remaining impervious to the bad ones." End quote. Now 31, Harrell has spent half his life dealing with this cancer. Recently, um, there is a new protocol uh, that's had some success battling his particular form of cancer. Harrell is hopeful of being, being accepted into that protocol program in the fall. So Harrell, we wish you the very best. We thank you for the ordinary way you've lived your life despite all these challenges. We pray that you're accepted into the program and that it eradicates all your cancer. And again, thank you for being an inspiration and truly an everyday hero. I want to thank Coach Porner, uh, several of my other coaches, Coach Collins. And I also want to thank my captain, Captain Hinojosa. Uh, he's the one that, you know, said those kind words and providing the letter that really meant a lot. Uh, I don't really have much to say. Uh, Besides, I'm blessed. Uh, just a short update. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I actually went to Houston uh, as part of the CAR T cell therapy. Uh, they took about 13, 14 tubes of blood. And then, long story short, what they do with CAR T is they take the T cells from your blood, engineer them uh, in a lab, and code it to fight to recognize my specific type of cancer or a specific type of cancer. Uh, what they do then is a couple weeks later you come in, you get another chemotherapy, and they infuse those cells back into my body. And over time, it's supposed to find the lymphoma and cure it, K kills it, kills it over time. Uh, so we're in the early stages of it. They're actually manufacturing those cells and coating them with that protein. So within a couple months, I'm expecting to get a call from them and to go on with the treatment to where Hopefully, I will be cured. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. You know, I've been through quite a bit <laughs> dealing with this, and this is actually the first, the first treatment that I can actually say that I feel will eradicate my cancer. So I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> Uh, I appreciate Arlington, I appreciate Mayor and everybody else for having me here. 
uh, is a pleasure. And I just hope to be in of inspiration and continue to hope to help serve my community. So I thank you all, I appreciate it. <laughs> This past year, we lost a Hall of Fame member from the 1940s. He was the city's first all-state football player. Please watch as we remember Carl Knox. Our current president, Ms. Keisha Mays. <laughs> current board member and current past president, Dr. Aaron Reich. And I guess I'm a current board member and current past, past, past president is kind of the way it goes. Um, to steal from the mayor, what a great night it is to be in athletics for the Arlington ISD. And let me just say, what a great year it is to be the athletics at Arlington ISD. On behalf of the school board and the entire school district of the Arlington ISD, let me just thank this entire room. Let me thank the room for the dedication and the thousands and thousands of kids that we all know have had their lives changed because of athletics. The other education is what's called many a time is sometimes the most critical education. X's and O's lead to reading and writing. X's and O's lead to numbers that kids are doing in math. We can't thank you for your support enough. I have to give a special thank you and dedication, and then we'll get into our talking about, to our athletic director who's standing right out in the hall, Mr. Eric White. And then also um, our assistant athletic directors, Ms. Kim Peach and Mr. Bruce Chambers and all the athletic department staff. Would you please stand up so we can thank you. And we've honored all these amazing former coaches, current uh, former players, but I have to thank all of our current coaches and everyone involved with the current AISD athletics. Would they please stand up so we can re recognize you. We're here to talk tonight and say thank you on behalf of the school district and what's happened. And as Jim Pointer and I started talking, we said, we need to give an update. 
We need to make sure this room understands how critical athletics are to the AISD. How every student being involved in extracurricular activity is one of our strategic focuses. They have to be involved in something because that's where they learn. So tonight we're going to talk about the bond and just give you an update of some of the things because we've had lots of questions about what's coming up and what's happening. The first we talk about, and this is where Jim started, he goes, where's this new thing being built? And you'll see, you've probably all heard of the ISD Athletic Complex. This is one of the game changers in Arlington ISD Athletics. This is something that we started working on the bond of 2014, and it's rolling out in the fall of 2020. If you look at where it's located, as people ask where this is, this took us a while to find a location. The board and staff worked really hard to finally find a location and work through the negotiations to get this location. This is right south of AT&T Stadium, next to our new Ranger Stadium ballpark and the new Texas Live development, and it's 25 acres, which is the old Eastern Star home development. It's a wonderful location to excel AISD athletics to the next destination. You'll see just some, we'll go through pretty fast, some outside slides of what we're looking at and what it's gonna look like, but you'll see what happens. This is a natatorium. We've heard for many years what's needed in AISD. We've got a main arena, pool, arena floor, also a main pool and a warm-up pool. Locker rooms, shared spaces, learning facilities, lobbies in the front, and just north of this facility is where our fine arts center is going to mesh the two together. We have learned more about swimming pools than we've ever wanted to learn in our entire lives in building this swimming pool. It will be a premier swimming pool that will attract events from all over the country. We expect 750 to a million dollars worth of revenue coming in to be able to assist us on this natatorium. 50 meter pool, eight competition lanes, bulkheads, diving well. It's a stretch pool so it can be turned and run either way. One to three meter boards. We also, more importantly, will send every single elementary school student through this pool for swim lessons to prevent any drownings that happen in Arlington. Now you'll look at our arena, which will host basketball, wrestling, and volleyball, and elementary gymnastics. That's going to seat 1,200 seats. The Natatorium, I think, is about 1,200 also. It's a multi-sport. We've built it, the amount of wrestling tournaments that can be held, and if you don't know our wrestling, is the premier level. The basketball, volleyball tournaments that can be held here, premier games for the junior highs, for the elementary, with 300 additional seats. You'll see the capacity for six mats that we have on the floor, and we spent more time talking about how do you roll wrestling mats up underneath the stands to make it easy, which we didn't realize was that complicated, but it became a thing that we achieved. Also, all of our elementaries will be going through elementary gymnastics programs to create physical fitness at all age levels going through the AISD. Of the athletics complex of what you'll see in the lobby and some of the things as you walk in. And you'll see we started this in September 2018. We actually thought it'd be September 2020. It took a little while to get it built, but this will be opening in the fall of 2020. And our expected deadline is for the school year of September 2020. Here you'll see just a little bit, if you ever want to keep up with it, like my mother does every single day, you can go on and look and they have a live feed of what's going on in the development so that you don't have to drive by every single day, which I think my mother does every other day to find out what's going on with this facility from excitement. But you'll see you can find anything on that on AISD.net for Bond and the Athletics Complex to see exactly what's going on in this amazing facility. You'll see on the south side, that's the parking lot. On the far north top of the picture is the athletic center. And then the natatorium's in the middle. And then the top side right there is the uh, fine arts center. You can see a, a visual image of what it'll look like once it's all completed. Now let me throw it over to Ms. Mays to talk about a couple of the other items we've got going. We're talking about the thing that's going to happen here in the future. So here's just a little bit of what has happened in the past. Our MAC centers that we did one for every single high school. Um, the MAC centers are 77,704 square feet worth of locker spaces, gym equipment to work out. We've got our field for the band to practice on, the cheerleaders, um, baseball drop nets, 
our junior high field tracks. We've been able to pin in field tracks at our junior highs. Um, a lot of the students were saying we take cones, put them in the grass, and that's how we made our lanes. So high school coaches, be prepared. They're going to learn how to get out of the blocks quicker because they won't be on the grass. Our hurdlers are going to be able to hurdle on actual ground for the track and not on grass. So this is very, very exciting as we help to prepare our students as they do go to high school. We had a partnership with the Dallas Cowboys, the NFL, and Hellas Construction Company. Um, you see the field there. You get to see the students that had an opportunity to play a little scrimmage game after we finished uh, cutting the ribbon. We're continuing with additional athletic renovations, the baseball field, additional high school renovations that we've completed, uh, additional bleachers, locker rooms, dance studios, scoreboards. That's a picture of Sam Houston's dance area. Here's additional additions that we're doing at our other high schools for renovation. So all of these are the things that we are completing or have completed already from our bond before we move into our fine athletics. So it's just really nice to see what has already been done in the area of athletics for our students here in AISD. One of the main reasons we're up here, while we want to talk about the bond, we also want to talk about something really exciting coming with the Arlington Athletic Foundation. For years, we've prepared our students to go on to be in NFL, the Olympics, world-class wrestlers, swimmers, gymnasts, professional baseball players, professional volleyball players. We've done all these amazing things. Our athletics complex is going to house, have thousands of students and, if, uh, and visitors going through yearly. It's a destination location that'll be an excellent place for people to come. With that, we're exploring and in works right now with a partnership for a place to house the Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor Foundation Award winners. That's a wrap. With that, we're exploring an opportunity so that the thousands of visitors and we have a permanent place for all these honorees to be honored perpetually in our building and our facility to show what amazing things have come through the AISD and let them know the advantages we have. We're working with the board and the staff and our board and a committee to figure out exactly how to do this and we can't thank the Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor enough and this foundation for supporting athletics and we can't do enough to support y'all and we look forward to having these future announcements and as I told Jeff Kemp, y'all are getting so big for this, maybe we got to move it over to the new arena and start hosting this event there so we can honor every single person. Thank you all for the support from the entire board. Thank you for everything y'all have done. Joining uh, me on stage now, Athletic Director Eric White, and we'll recognize our state champions from 2018-2019. The female state champion in archery from Martin, she connected on 296 out of 300 Sophie White, our male state champion, also in archery, hit 293 out of 300 from Arlington High, Noah Renteria. Our boys 6A state champion in the 300 hurdles from Bowie, Ryan Williams. Girls 6A state champion in golf from Martin, Trinity King. And we also want to recognize our volunteer of the year representing Martin, Sergeant Brian Jones. Our principal of the year from Bowie, Rene Lazardo. Junior High Female Coach of the Year in basketball from Workman, Renetta Dennis. We had a tie for our Junior High Male Coaches of the Year, first from Carter in football and basketball, Braylon Gray. Our other Junior High Male Coach of the Year from Bailey in cross country, track, basketball, and football, Mark Cooper. Athletic Trainer of the Year from Arlington, Christine Morgan. We also have a two-way tie for the Transformational Coach of the Year, first from Workman in basketball, Andre Miller. Also a Transformational Coach of the Year from Sam Houston in football and track, Ramon Stenson. Assistant Coach of the Year from Martin in volleyball and soccer, Rhonda Dunn. Academic Athlete of the Year from Lamar, her sports, volleyball and tennis, Alyssa Hamlin. The AISD Female Athlete of the Year from Bowie in basketball, Malay McQueen. The AISD Male Athlete of the Year from Seguin in baseball, Caden Morton. The Eddie Peach Coach of the Year, Lamar football coach, Laban DeLay. Our final award is named after Mayfield Workman, who coached the Arlington Colts to the 1951 state championship in football, also longtime 
athletic director. He will attend Oklahoma. He'll be a Sooner. But tonight, he's a volunteer in football. Our Mayfield Workman Athlete of the Year from Bowie, Ty DeArmond. To hand out our Rusty Ward and Eddie Peach scholarships, please welcome Scott Peach. When you grow up in Arlington your whole life, it's a blessing. But you also have stories with just about everybody in the room. My favorite Ben Greaves story of all time, and there's a lot of them, but I had the opportunity to coach with Terry King. And Terry King at Martin High School was one of the funniest men I have ever met in my life. He was the type that when I went golfing with him, he asked me if he could try my awesome three wood. He swung it. The club head went flying off into the tree line. He handed it back to me and said, that's a pretty good club. <laughs> but I asked Terry King one time, you know, what was important to him about coaching. He said, I'll tell you this, Scott. The best coaching job I ever did in my life was Ben Greve. And I said, is that true? He said, yes, sir. And I said, what was it that was so special that you did with Ben? He said, I tell you what, I'd go out there and I'd say, hey, Ben, boy." <laughs> hey, Ben, that thing you did right there, good job. <laughs> he said, best coaching job he ever did. Um, I had the opportunity tonight um, to interview, uh, to introduce some very special awards. Um, these four awards are the best of the best. Uh, we started this with the Hall of Honor a few years ago that with the great Rusty Ward, with the great Eddie Peach, uh, that we wanted to honor the very best that Arlington has and to reward them with a $1,000 scholarship. Uh, first of all, Rusty Ward was the great athlete in Arlington High history on the football team that you always hear about. Um, he passed away last year, uh, but this is in his, his honor. First of all, from Seguin High School, the 2019 Rusty Ward Scholar Athlete, Kai Brooks. And our male scholar athlete, also receiving a $1,000 scholarship from Bowie High School quarterback, Malcolm Mays. I was finishing up college, and I came home. I've been accepted to a couple of law schools. And I walked in the door with my mom and my father, and I announced to them that I decided to go away from law school and I was going to coach. My mother started yelling at me. She started crying. She informed me that your father and I had no choice. We weren't smart enough to do anything but coaching. But for you, you can do anything in the world you want to do. She did not speak for me for six months, and she walked out of the room. I, of course, was disappointed with this. I turned and looked at my father, Eddie Peach, and he got this great big grin on his face and he couldn't have been more proud. My father truly believed that coaching was the greatest profession in the world. He was the best of all of us in Arlington. We miss him very, very much, but it's my privilege at this time to introduce two very, very special people that will receive the Eddie Peach Scholar Athlete Award. First of all, I have seen her hang upside down in the pole vault. She is truly an amazing athlete, but she is also a tremendous student involved with a lot of service things, Please put your hands together for Martin High School's Riley Alexander. And finally, the male recipient, the very best of the best that I've been around. Fourth in his class at Arlington High School, football player, baseball player, great servant, going to be a tremendous person in the future with whatever he wants to do. The 2019 Eddie Peach Scholar Athlete on the male side from Arlington High School, Nate White. We have three more state champions to recognize. The UIL 6A state champion in girls wrestling from Martin, Samara Chavez. The UIL 6A state champion in boys wrestling from Martin, Donovan Whitted. Also a 6A state champion in boys wrestling, also from Martin, Dominic Chavez. I'd like to have all the uh, Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor Foundation board come up to the uh, front at this time. This is our great looking board right here. Believe it or not, Dr. Cavazos, I, I, I have to steal his quote when he said, all, you got this few of people that put all this together, and it's the truth. This few of people, this hardworking group right here made all this happen tonight. Give them a round of applause. People that are real special, to my heart that I've got to recognize is I want every coach in the room 
past or present, I want you to stand up at this time. Trainers too, please stand up. Now stay up. I want you to get it. Come on. We've had a lot of standing ovation tonight. We can give them one. Let's go. When we talk about heroes, it starts, with, it starts with these men and women. These are the mentors, mentors for your sons and daughters. And our district is in great hands with the people that you just saw standing up. Thank you. The last thing that I want to talk to you about is this envelope. I, I lied to you. I said I wasn't going to take any of your money. But this envelope right here has a inside of it. It's in your program. If you get home tonight and you feel like you want to make it, not tonight, if you get home tonight and you're going through this program and this falls out and you're called to make a donation, it's all right here on this piece of paper. Just send, just put a stamp on it, put your donation in there, whatever, however you want to do it, and send it to us. And it'll be greatly appreciated. Again, it, a night like tonight, just it's not free, but we've got so many th giving people that make it happen. And just like I said, if you get home tonight and you're called to do so, we would... Uh, gladly appreciate any donation you'd make okay the uh, last thing I want to do is I in closing the program I've got uh, Elaine Maddox she's the pastor with the Dallas Police Department uh, she is going to close our event tonight our evening with a prayer and in looking at a website the art of manliness it said what is a characteristic of a good player to play fair to be a team player to stay positive to lose gracefully, win with class, respect the rules, and know how to be a teammate and a team player. This big city to the east of Arlington owes a lot to the Arlington sports program. For you see, we have many of our firefighters that were part of this program that learned these very characteristics under the leadership of the coaches and those in Arlington who cared enough to give of themselves to make young men better men better servants. So I'll name a few. For those of you that are with the uh, 1974 graduates of Sam Houston High School, where I graduated in 1973, you may, you may remember Michael Phillips. He's one of our Dallas firefighters, retired last year, also an attorney. You may also remember Warren Parker, who graduated from Lamar High School in 1987. <laughs> He's on the urban search and rescue team with the Dallas Fire Rescue Department, which means that if there's a major disaster in, Arling in Arlington, he's going to be here to rescue some of you. Along with the captain, Mike McCloskey, Station 19B, who's also part of the urban search and rescue team, who graduated from Lamar High School in 1988. The list goes on and on. Will Kitchens, and then tonight we've honored one of our newest and brightest members of the Dallas Fire Rescue, Harrell Hicks. So I say thank you to the Arlington Sports Program for what you mean to the Dallas Fire Rescue Department and the way in which you've touched communities all across this area because of the dedication and the servant leadership that you've exemplified. So if you'll bow your head, please. Our dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this night. What a wonderful time to celebrate true leadership, to celebrate the sports in the city of Arlington. And Lord, we thank you for Tommy Vandegrift, a man with a dream, a vision of sports, but not only a dream for sports, a dream for a city that would be a beacon. This Arlington would be a city on a hill. This, the Arlington that we know to, today that has the can-do spirit. We thank him for that. Lord, we thank you for the coaches through the years, the Jerry Griffins and others who, who went above and beyond to make these young men who they were, who mentored, who literally poured their lives into these young men and women, like we observed in Jim Pointer and the relationship he had with Harrell Hicks. Lord, I thank you for this committee 
the tireless effort that they make in order for this to take place, in order that the memory and the history of sports in the city of Orleans will be captivated and something that we can come back to. Those of us who grew up here can come here and be proud of and be, and be humbled for. We thank you for those who support the Arlington Athletic Hall of Honor. As Chris Carroll has found, we can't outgive you. Continue to bless Arlington Athletics. We love you and we thank you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen.